thank you both for joining us um, today. We just like to, you know, highlight some of the challenges that come with being a mother, going back to university with children that are not in full-time education. So I'm going to start with Shimola. Shimola, do you like to just tell us a bit about yourself and some of the, the kind of issues that have recently presented for you? Okay. Um, afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Shimola. Um, I'm actually a mature, how can I say, student. I'm not actually a young mum, <laughs> but um, I saw Fiona's um, Instagram just browsing via Instagram. And as I was going back to university, I'm actually in my, what am I in my third year? Cause before I got pregnant, I had already completed two years. I'm actually studying a, a degree in health and social care. And it's a four year degree with a foundation year, hence the four years. Um, so my daughter's now one. So I decided I would take the whole year out in order just to be at home with her. Um, come September in getting ready to go back to university I came across obviously the struggle of having to find childcare then I realized that the funding that was provided to me from student finance was not going to basically cover what I would need to pay each month for my childcare and I, I've also been told that it goes by the area now I live in Ealing so parts of Ealing childcare is quite expensive so um, my issue was basically I'm finding, trying to find that extra bit to cover so that she can go to nursery just for the three days while I'm at uni studying. So, um, yeah, that's my um, struggle. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and, and had you been proactively looking for um, nurseries before just to kind of get an understanding of fees or was this something that was a bit of a shock to you? Well, I started, I started looking for nurseries when she was born in September last year and I started looking from January this year, uh, made the application with student finance, was none the wiser of basically um, the way it worked. When I applied for the student finance, they didn't make it clear that I would have to pay the shortfall. It just, they just made it seem like, I'm, I'm not sure if you're aware of the childcare grant. Shamel, do you know about the childcare grant? That's that, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so, I, I agree. I had the same problem as well. Yeah, so I got that um, for the year. However, they work it out. But then I got, I came. It was, it was actually one of the nurses who um, said to me, um, double check with student finance whether they're going to pay the full amount. And I said to her, Are you sure? Because I've been told that they will pay a full amount. So when I checked with student finance, they was like, No, we have a cap of 174 pound 22 pence or they pay 85 whichever out of the two is less if that makes sense so because my um child care a week was like 200 plus which was above their 174 they would only pay the 174 um, per week and i would have to pay the shortfall which was working out like 200 pound plus a month that i would have to pay out of my own pocket yeah. and just having student finance and I wasn't able to cover it. I'm not working. Yeah, so um, it was... Yeah, it was... Yeah. Because before I went to university, I was working, but then I was finding it was too much and I stopped my job. I went down to one day and then I completely left my job. And just to concentrate on my study, then I got pregnant and it goes on. But then, um, yeah, so it's just been a bit of a struggle trying to find help it's it's weird like <laughs> I don't know it's yeah. really it's a bit it, it, it's, it's sad, saddening because um I have an older daughter who's 20 and when she was in childcare, that was obviously 20 years ago the funding that um was given at that time it was like working tax credit and child tax credit it covered the nursery fund so to know obviously and obviously I know times go on and things change, yeah. that there's no support. It's really um, difficult. Definitely. I can, I can actually identify with that because I'll be <laughs> honest with you, it was when my daughter who's just turned 16, when she, when she was in childcare, it was working tax credit and child yeah. tax credit that enabled me to one work, work exactly. and have 
a lifestyle. We were able to go on holiday. We had exactly. a quality of life, you exactly. know. So I, I can, I can certainly echo just how different times have been. Thank you for sharing, um, Shamola. So, Shamel, over to you. I just want you to just introduce yourself as well, and just tell us a bit about your um, situation with going back to uni. Okay. So, hi guys. Um, so I'm Shamel. Um, so I got pregnant during my placement year in uni so I was studying law in Leicester um, but obviously I had did my placement in London and I got pregnant so I finished my placement year um, had my son in November um, last year so he's going to be turning one in a, in a week actually um, so I deferred no did I defer yeah I can't even remember anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going back. I went back to uni in September just like now. Um and I I got him into childcare. So I did the childcare grant too, and they cover the 174 pounds as Shimola was saying as well. But he's only in nursery for three days and I just cover the rest. Um luckily I have help from his dad, so we split the extra cost. Um but my struggle is, is that the three days isn't enough. So I have um, lectures for, for the three days that he's at nursery, but for me to do the workload that's given, I don't have enough days to do that without him, without my son being at home. Um, so yeah, I'm struggling in that sense because I need him to be at nursery for a bit more, for a few more days, like hopefully Monday to Friday, but I can't really afford it. So I'm just trying to figure out how I can like time manage. Yeah. <laughs> I see. So it's more about kind of juggling the time management when he's off and you're off because yeah. obviously there's a bit of a shortfall. So um, is, is, have you been, I, I know that before when you were looking, you said to me that you hadn't looked for nurseries that would cover the full fee. If you found, because I remember you were saying something about there are nursery that has kind of different options in terms of the, you know, kind of the fees. Yeah, so what do you mean in terms of like the cre like creches? Yes. Um, yeah, so my uni, they don't, like there are some universities that have nurseries on site. Mm -hmm. And then with that, I think it's like a discounted price. I don't know if um we didn't find out like the shoot the child care grant won't cover it all mm. so they'll so still do the 85 percent but what will be left over would be a lot less than if like just the normal nursery especially if your child's under three and then um there are some unis as well that um give like grants to some parents i my uni doesn't do that either which i which I kind of regret. So before, when I was looking for unis, when I just had Cairo, I didn't really look into what was offered for parents, like or like parents for the unis. And if I'd done that, I probably would have chose a different uni, maybe one with the, with a nursery on site as well. Because um, yeah. yeah, the nursery that he's in quite in now is actually quite expensive. Yeah, well, mm. that's all useful. I think sometimes experiences kind of allow for us to sit back and think, oh, had I had known this, I'd have probably looked at this ones or, yeah. you know, more suitable. So um, that it's all helpful, really. Yeah. Um, Sarah, the, did you want to add something? Yeah, I was just going to ask, I don't actually know, but whether the um, childcare grant is the same across the country, because obviously, like being in London, cost of childcare is so much more right. than other places across the country yeah. and yeah. it would be kind of fair if there was like a London waiting for for that um, um, to reflect how much more expensive it is mm. but then yeah um, I think it's still the same so they will still only cover either the 85 percent or 174 pounds a week whatever's cheaper however um, the amount that you get for the whole year, I think that defers depending on how much your household income is. So it doesn't really matter where you are, but how much your household income is. So I guess if you're in an area that has cheaper nursery fees, then you're lucky because you get to cover more days. Mm, yes. London, probably just about get two days. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, I mean, you know, I just want to also just encourage the both of you as well, because as much as, you know, you're going through the motions of 
working through the childcare aspects versus fees versus you know what you can manage but just see it as kind of this is just also a moment as well where yeah. as your children grow and they you know get into full-time education as well you'll be able to kind of be a bit more freer and I suppose this is kind of like a bit of a sacrifice or the pain process that you have to also endure but what we've been looking at um, as an organization is how we can support women like yourselves because the whole point in kind of going to uni and you know upskilling yourself and getting the qualifications is so that you know the investment that you're putting in now is so that down the line you can live the quality of life and a fulfilled life, I should say, um, as you qualify in the fields that you've chosen. So it is, it's a credit to you both, because it's so easy. I know that Shamola, when I was speaking to you, you've kind of, what have you decided to do now with regards to because of how the childcare situation is? Um, I'm either gonna look for um, Parminder, but I'm a bit hesitant because I'm not really a fan of having my child in someone's house. <laughs> I don't know, I prefer nursery over a childminder, but they're supposed to be a bit cheaper. But yet again, like I said, it depends on the borough that you're living in. And I did actually speak to someone in Elam, Elam Council. They said to me, there wasn't really much of a difference in the nursery fee, nursery fee and a childminder fee. Oh. It was just only a little bit of a difference. Yeah, it wasn't much of a difference, but I don't yeah. know. I'm still just going to keep looking but I'm also in the process of um, moving home so wow. maybe fingers crossed by the time I'm ready to um, put her into nursery in January when I go back to university I can get somewhere else that may be a bit cheaper. Absolutely so you've got it all going on isn't it new home trying to study. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh mm -hmm. god the mm -hmm. juggle the juggle exactly. of motherhood. But I just want to mm -hmm. say to you, you both as well that we are here and as and you know, we're, we're mums ourselves, both of us. You're not speaking to women who are just kind of reading from a textbook. We're living, we're living motherhood ourselves daily, right, Sarah? Yeah. <laughs> and um, mm. it's not something that we we don't, when I don't think that anybody has the, the full answer to everything. I think there's just solutions that can be found. There's tips that can be found. There's solutions, there's coping strategies. And what we want to be able to provide from our network is looking at how we can share and disseminate those kind of tips or useful information and providing that support network. And that's why we're looking at exploring the kind of pairing up and buddying other mums who have gone through it with their children to kind of be that inspiration. And like I said before, the cheerleader to say, come on guys, you can do this, you know? And that's what we all need. I'll be honest with you. That is what we all need is somebody to just give us that kind of, pat on the back that we don't often get or that you know reassurance to say it will get better so um I just want to say thank you again for joining